I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor, well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away. That's what drives us at Ozzy, the idea that more is possible. And we're not afraid to challenge assumptions about the way the world is in order to see the way the world it could be. That conviction is right in our name. Yup, it's from the Percy Bysshe Shelley poem Ozymandias. And yup, most folks read that poem as a caution against big egos and the impermanence of power. We read it differently. To us, the poem says, think big, but be humble, lest you end up two vast and trunkless legs in the desert. We know that's an unconventional interpretation, and that's who we are. Because in a world littered with conformity, we like to see things differently. We hope, through Ozzy, you will too. That is from the actual about oh section of Ozzy.com. Oh, I, I brought I this th- up and I thought I was just joking. No. I, for real. Third Ozzy Mondeus quote. Do you think I'm some cartoon villain? No, my plan already started 30 minutes ago. Comet is on stage with Hillary Clinton now. <laughs> Folks, that's it. This uh, website is not just a, a, a pretty average looking uh, new media digital site with news and opinions. Uh, it actually has destroyed the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, <laughs> Eat shit, entropy. You can live forever. Yeah, on I will never die. I there will There is no never impermanence. Die. You're just, you, oh, really? Ozymandias co- collapsed in the desert, surrounded by nothingness? You just didn't want it enough, buddy. We, we, you. It's psychotic. It is amazing. It is folks, saying. That folks. That's Hillary mindset, right? The folks. There. That is, that's the, yes, that's the singularity. That's folks. What and what rough the beast? Goo. And what rough beast? It's our come round at last. Slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. It's innovation, <laughs> and it's coming soon to you. We know that that's an unconventional interpretation. <laughs> yeah, fuck As those. in that it's completely wrong. We yeah. look but at- I went to a bullshit fifty billion dollar liberal art school that told me nothing I said was wrong. Our 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 website, our new media digital platform, is all about connecting falcons with falconers. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 here at Ozzy want to give you news, brought to you for and by millennials. Live video and a little bit of fun. Also, we're building a new Tower of Babel. <laughs> you know what? We will replace God. <laughs> People said, "Oh, you know this whole." thing about life is that it ends and everything is pr- impermanent and you have to savor for the moment and you can't really expect to you know exist in y- your own state forever you have to ra- wrangle with uh, impermanence and then uh, i poison my brain on soylent and Adderall, and now i say fuck that all of this is you know by way of introducing uh to amber and felix and you the listener uh our journey matt and i went on a journey yesterday. Fantastic voyage. A spiritual and psychic voyage into the basically neoliberal Coachella that is Ozzy Fest Mm -hmm. in New York City's Central Park. A two-day festival put on by Ozzy Media, which is a new digital media company you probably haven't heard of. (laughs) No. But uh, But, hey, you have now, so mission accomplished. I heard an ad in the cab on it Mm. uh, that said... um, we at Ozzy report on news that hasn't been reported on. <laughs> like it's some hot new band or so. They don't know how the news works. Yeah. They think yes. they're going to get a deep cut. Very underrated news. So we have, we have three hairless bald women, the same ones from Minority Report, <laughs> telling us about future events. By the way, the top five stories, I looked at this while we were at the thing to see what the actual website was. The top five stories on Ozzy.com are all about Trump and Putin. And every other yes, of course, place that of every course. other place has. Because if you're going to actually have like any kind of serious investigative reporting that covers something that should be covered but isn't being covered, 
Well, that takes expertise and, and, and way too much money. Yeah, way, and just, just a bunch of money. fly by night fucking yeah. media companies. And they want opinion no, 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 and yeah. takes because it's each, it's cheap, cheap, cheap. So yeah, it's interesting that they report on Trump Russia, but don't report on Akon bringing electricity <laughs> to six hundred million Africans. <laughs> so, Ozzy Fest. This was something. It was it was basically it's pe- it's for people who want a sort of music festival style environment where there's like VIP sections and sort of food truck. Style, you get to stand uh, in the sun and it's standing in the sun and being <laughs> herded around. Things. That is why both of you are wearing the bandanas. Yes, we. Matt oh, I, I are, never took mine off. <laughs> in fact, was, now it's fused with my skull. Yeah, Matt, Matt, and it keeps whispering to me, disrupt, disrupt. As I said earlier, you both look like a, a hiker's German shepherd. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys are Behringer and Defoe from Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> which one is which, though? Okay, you're obviously Defoe. Matt is Behringer. Hell yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna die. And I'm I'm Charlie Sheen, but in real life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so God bless my VPN. <laughs> let, 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 let me let me set this up for you. So you may have heard about Ozzy Fest. This is what we do for you, dear listener. Matt and I joined up with Jamie Peck of the Majority Report to cover Ozzy Fest in the way I think it deserves to be covered. It or, needed to be covered, and the only way that would it would be bearable is that we all took LSD before we went to what is essentially, I was, as I was trying to say, a music festival for people who want that Coachella environment, but they want to see the news live yeah. instead of bands. Yes. It's like, like they just want to like see MSNBC, the live experience. Every, every, every one of the panels was like a different show that fills the daytime hours of MSNBC. A panel show, one-on-one interview. It was the fucking news. And people were standing there getting sunstroke uh, 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 like four beers in, watching the news. Who's like the uh, fish of the news? <laughs> like who could do like a like forty five minute long jam session about how Trump Russia affects suburban voters? I gotta say that sounds like uh, uh, that sounds like my my boy Morning Joe. Morning honestly. Joe, yeah, Morning Joe. He's he just dude. You give him that energy of the crowd. And yeah, he will be. He'll be doing it all. He'll be doing just repulsive banter with Mika, where you imagine him just fucking absolutely tearing it up in a Lisa mattress or some other neoliberal <laughs> mattress and then he's going over to uh you know riff on I don't know like Matt Matt Gatz or something some other rep that no one likes and then talk about his experience in Congress and then suddenly cut out you know before the part where he left I describe this as like a uh, neoliberal Coachella and I would describe like the both the ideology and presentation of this event was identical to the Microsoft commercial with Common. And I mean identical because Common was one of the keynote speakers. We're living in the future we always dreamed of. <laughs> Multiple realities, right? Your fingertips. That, th- this was really the, uh, this, this was the, the undergirding uh, sort of mentality of everything we saw there. Was this is how death cults start. The, the Common Microsoft commercial. Oh, no. Th- this this, this felt uh, like it. Ozzy Fest answered the question for me, the sort of Zen Cohen about, what is the sound of one hand clapping, but replaced it with what is the sound of people talking about issues and, so, and you know, events of the day without ever actually saying anything. It was stunningly, stunningly devoid. Every panel, every sentence uttered was just this echoing nothingness. It's like one of those big Buddhist bells that they ring that echoes throughout the fucking ashram or whatever and reminds you of you know the empty void within that can never be understood. That was every word coming out of these people's mouths. It was. I'm astounding. sorry, I've just been distracted since you said Zen Cohen because it sounds like someone who went to St. Anne's with Lena Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dad is managing director of uh, paper, per commercial paper and slavery at Goldman Sachs, <laughs> but I'm not going into that. My name is Zen Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Let, let's begin like. The crowd was overwhelmingly uh, young to middle-aged women. Like these are people who all showed up to see the key, you know, the big headliner. Oh, those are just Tom Perez groupies. H- Hillary Clinton. <laughs> they came to see Hillary Clinton, and there's a lot of like nasty women T-shirts. I saw a friend of the pod. Friend of the pod T-shirts. Uh, my favorite T-shirt that I saw was a woman with a T-shirt that said, "Dance like Russia isn't watching." Yes, because it's Russia that could at any yeah. time uh, hijack any of the fucking cameras. And I don't know devices. about you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I just stand from my webcam dabbing, despite Putin. 
uh, as I was walking into to Central Park, I was like, had my headphones in, and like I popped them out because I was like, okay, game face, got to find Matt, got to get into Ozzy Fest. And I swear to God, like Thomas Friedman ca- cab driver moment, as soon as I popped my headphones out, the first thing I heard was two women walking behind me, and one of them said, the first thing I heard, this is basically the coolest thing I've ever done. And oh, I've had friends God. who have been to Bonnaroo and South by Southwest, and like now I've been to a festival too. <gasps> what what were the what were the other things the that woman did oh, in her that's life so that that's like sad. the coolest thing? Just running up to catch the sweat coming off of t- uh, Carl Rove's Christmas ham head. <laughs> oh so. my God. That's Mark Sanford in real life. <laughs> Holy shit! We'll get that to Mark Sanford, bleak. but uh, so it's held in the uh, Donald Rumsfeld Playground of uh, Central yes. Park. Uh, this is the place that they have a summer stage, uh, the Rumsey Playfield. So uh, we go in through security. Uh, blast off! Yeah. <laughs> we we launch our pineal glands um, into the the universe to see where it'll take us. Uh, we walk in, and the opening panel on the main <laughs> stage is a panel about sports entrepreneurship. No, no, just entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, but it all featured former athletes, and it was being moderated by Carlos Watson, who is the founder of Ozzy. And he was talking to A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, and a bunch of like other... Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, starting a small business while yeah. working in the NFL. <laughs> uh, so it was sort of about uh, sports sports entrepreneurs. And we heard a little bit of Alex Rodriguez talking about, you know, building businesses. Yeah. He, he did say one line where he was like, I took the, the principles and concept of teamwork that I learned in athletics and applied it to business. Yeah, that's basically wow. it. He said that. Yeah. Oh and people God. had paid to see it. And they were sitting on the ground in front By of the way, I, I think d- you involuntarily tented your fingers yeah, Andre yeah. Steakhouse style for that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, by the way, uh, tickets for this event were like $100 a day. Insane. <laughs> for, the, for the lowly ticket where you got the privilege of standing on the fake grass or sitting ne- in front of the, the stadium or in front of the uh, stage, you could pay up to $300 to get access to the VIP bleachers and the hospitality bar mm-hmm. that was next to the stage. Just a ha- it's like everything that's uh, that's soul destroying about going to a festival. That's what they like about festivals. I don't want the you know the music and the sense of camaraderie and and passion and rhythm. None of the I just art want of the intimacy. all of the tedious and enervating and late capitalist soul destroying shit. I want to go through TSA level security and be herded like a fucking animal into this place. I want to way way, way overpay for food and drinks. Uh, I want to stand in the sun. I want to observe my betters flaunt their superiority to me right in my presence. But no, that's what they like about fucking mass gatherings. It's perverse. And again, like I said, this was all to basically see the equivalent of any single segment on like cable news. That you oh, yeah. See Something during, from Squawk Box. Well, yeah. We're talking to A-Rod here about transitioning to business after a life in the MLB. So uh, we're walking around and then there's like uh, there was like the main stage. And then there was, they had sort of like a, a B stage by the, the band shell in Central Park. And we decided to check that out. And you sort of walk out of the main concert area and, of course, have to go back through security if yeah, you want you to had, come back in. That's how well Even though we it had our wrist lanyards and stamped hands yeah, so marking th- us as Ozzy Fest members. That is how poorly divined it was. The two stadiums aren't connected security-wise because the, the other one is in the band shell just overlooking Central Park. Uh, so they just tell you, yeah, you've got to come all the way back and go through security again. And you already get a lanyard. And it's a fucking lanyard for your wrist. It's like people these, these people love lanyards so much they had to give them a wrist lanyard instead of a bracelet. And then you also get a hand stamp. And you need both of those to get back. It's like some sort of parody of, of like a border, uh, just, you know, uh, randomness. And then that's how poorly designed the fucking thing was. But I think, once again, that's a feature they like about it. So they want to go through. It's like going on a, a, um, a roller coaster. You're like, can I go through security again? It was fun. When, uh, when wonks beef with each other, uh, they have their shooters run up on each other and snatch each other's lanyards. Yeah. <laughs> I got your lanyard, um, sucker. Yeah. So uh, Matt, Jamie, and I, like I said, we walked in. We saw A-Rod talking. But we decided to go to like the B stage because we really wanted to see a panel discussion featuring Steven Pinker. Oh, God, man. The Harvard sort of neuroscientist and the guy whose main message is... You have despite to what you, it's getting bad. Yeah, despite what you may think by watching the news or All observing the, the aspects of your own life, things overwhelmingly for the human race are getting better because the 21st century is better than the 19th. It's, inter- it's innovative. 
You get you have a small phone now in your hand. And he was on stage at, at a panel with uh, I looked this up. Um, a woman named Cindy Me, who I'm writing here is the founder and CEO of VIP Kid, VIP Kid, an education technology company that connects K through eight students in China with teachers in North America for online English immersion. So she's this sort of like educational entrepreneur. And when she was talking, she this is right when I started feeling, you know, the viper work its way up my spine <laughs> into my brain, soaking it all. But she started using phrases like educational technology and curriculum products. Yeah, She's talking about the brave future where, where teachers can do what they've always wanted to do most, which is educate and connect with thousands of students at a time, which I really don't think is what teachers really want to do. Their base, her basic premise is we're going to destroy education as a, as a, a, a job. We're going to destroy that entire class of people by uh, outsourcing education to a small cadre of, of cheap instructors who can instruct thousands of students at once using the Internet. That's the entire point of this. Break teachers' unions, fire the, most, the vast majority of public sector educational employees and replace them with uh, private freelancers getting no benefits who can teach 10,000 students a day. Well, we I, don't yet have the learning pod technology, so there has to be some kind of interim. Yeah. Well, what if teachers, they weren't assigned a classroom, <clears throat> but they all host their individual Twitch channels, and the most charismatic ones, like the best ones, get the most students, viewers. Yeah, and, that's going to happen. Enough. But, but, but the viewer, like, how do they make their money? Okay, how do you read someone in chat on Twitch? They give you bits or a donation. So the students who have the most entrepreneur like entrepreneurial instinct and have money from like you know selling lemonade in you know, a way they're like, angel investors yeah angel yeah. investors tooth fairy investors. they give bits to the teacher to ask their questions so the kids with the most get up and go yeah the most motivated the most. ones you know i am more and more soviet every day <laughs> <laughs> you would be after i mean ever, honestly i am after seeing oh, God. this horror yeah. show if, yesterday if, they had, if, if the fucking nkvd had driven up and covered the whole thing in barbed wire with me inside i would have thought this is for the better for mankind <laughs> <laughs> so and then it was uh pinker cindy me and a guy named mike mo who's a who's a Manages some capital fund. He wasn't fund. even trying when he got his name. <laughs> <laughs> he manages some like Silicon Valley uh, capital fund that invests in crap. And he is the author of a book called The Global Silicon Valley ooh, Handbook. Ooh, and doesn't that make you honestly, skin crawl? Honestly, it's interesting because like this one was on like the non-main stage. And this was, again, dreadfully boring, mind-numbing horseshit. However, this, this panel that we saw did have the most actual like real kind of like tangible ideology that you oh, can kind yeah. of absorb and sink your teeth into because it, you know i think pinker really sums it up where he's just saying like look if you read the news every day you'll be depressed but like you know that that's missing the forest from the trees because overall technology is making things better and like we shouldn't really be you know we shouldn't really be concerned about things like inequality because nah. like i think he said uh that if you look through history the things that have really uh, made civilizations more equal with yes. one another are plagues, wars, and violent revolutions. Yeah, and since we don't want those, we have to put up with inequality. That was his basic message. And he was, and he was basically saying, like, you know, we didn't need to worry so much about inequality because, like, it's not so much how big the gap is, it's how good the life you have at the very right. bottom. Right, and because everything's the... improving for people on the bottom, it's okay that they're on the bottom because their lives are easier. It's like the, the you have a flat screen TV, but you're poor thing. Yeah, like, exactly. Basically. And, you know, and, and of course, hovering over the, of both Pinker's comments, and he acknowledges this himself, as well as the entire Saturday event was th this idea that like, hey, it's cool. We're the we're the change generation. Everything is like progressive and technology and it's at our fingertips. Better. But uh, Trump and Putin bad and scary, and we're all very disturbed and upset about that. And we're looking for ways to like, you know, what do we do? What do we do? And it's like Trump and Putin are like the dangerous outlier mm -hmm. that is disturbed or otherwise. Uh, perfect, you know, sort of our progressive, yeah, yeah exactly, neoliberal that every, this paradise. Idea that, like everything is getting the better. They're in the garden. Yeah, that everything is getting better and like you know more tolerant and like uh, our quality of life is getting better and we're all opening ourselves up and are all hyper ambitious and sort of connected uh, individuals in a global global solutions for a global world. Absolutely. Basically. If you're really into the Trump Russia stuff, like how do you look at that? Like that's the only thing you look at all day. How do you look at that and go like, oh, I guess we should have had like way stricter enforcement of white collar crime or, oh, hey, 
I guess maybe capital is oh, extremely no, no, strong. No, or why. hey, hey, you know that giant spying apparatus we got? The giant digital spying apparatus looks like it didn't do anything at no, all. No, no, you're forgetting though. No, it's okay. You can't change any of this. All that's right, that's yeah. the message that Mike Mo made that really made my skin crawl. The 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 uh, interviewer actually says. Uh, because they ask, first they ask him, what are the trends that you think are exciting and great and are going to shape the future? And one of them, he said, was the sharing economy, one of the most Orwellian, horrible buzzwords in history, and how great it is. And it's changing the game for all these industries, which, of course, means undercutting traditional rivals and, you know, under-regulating the sector. Uh, and she said, but the problem, and then she says, the interviewer, well, yeah, but a lot of those jobs, they're contractors, they have low pay, they don't have benefits. How is that, is that really a sustainable model for employment now? And his ans- answer was, well, you know, that's the way things are now. Uh, that's, that's, it's, it's people, a pers- this is almost a literal quote. If you graduate from college, uh, graduate, they're expected to go through 15 or so careers in their lifetime before they retire. If, if they, they retire, retire, is how yeah. we finish the sentence. And he says, you can fight it, but it's like fighting gravity. That was Folks, also- my but friends, I mean, that's his in, ideology. In, in his technocracy, can we not fight gravity? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get, get someone musky and intellect on this. But no, it was just like, it was the end of no country for old men. Everything. It's like every time they talked, it seemed like they were going to turn to you and their eyes were going to go black and they're just going to go, you cannot resist what is coming. If there was a Goku of neoliberalism, he would conjure a spirit bomb from the energy of this event. Yeah, but the, the, just in that first panel, we got the message loud and clear. Uh, the totalizing effects of the market are unstoppable. They're a natural force. They're like a fucking comet that's going to hit Earth. You will be subsumed by it. You will be stripped bare of by it and atomized by it. And your only hope is to crawl into a ball and maybe hope that you took enough massive online classes and educational Twitch streams to meek out an existence in this new world uh, and that there's nothing else to be done. That was the message. By the way, uh, as we were watching this, this was right around the time. I don't know about you, Matt. Like uh, the weirdness started to kick in. Oh yeah, the fear. I was I was beginning to get the fear uh, for sure. Oh yeah. And so we decided to walk back into the event. And I want to make note of uh, one one of the features of like there was a they had this big uh, sort of knit map of the world, like a big yarn map of the world, Mm -hmm. and you were supposed to take a piece of yarn and connect it from where you are now. And connected to a place on the yarn map where you're gonna be. <laughs> they had they had a a, a New York City based calligraph calligraph artist named Rammer doing calligraffiti on a big blackboard. Yeah. But awesome. my favorite thing they had they, they had this big sort of um it, it was sort of like a big wooden board with uh, spinnable blocks cut out of it. That were like they would like you'd spin one face of the block and it would be like did you know and x x y z and then you'd spin the block and it would tell you facts about a news or historical item so it was basically like a giant adult playground for news where you're a news infant and you just like touch <laughs> it like like you know you, you do like uh like speak and say or like block play but to learn about news factoids and Felix you will be uh. You know, maybe you maybe you'll enjoy to hear they did one of the news blocks was about the Fortnite revolution. Yeah, that's going on and right how now. it's a blow for gender equality because it's one of the first games where women people are opting for female avatars at a similar rate to men. Oh yeah, well I mean that just makes sense. I mean the girl character models are better done. Also, like they may have smaller hit boxes. I'm not quite sure, okay. but I, you notice right. that all the pros use females. Felix, yeah. it's called a vulva. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, guy's hitting me in my hitbox. He's bottoming out. <laughs> so moving on, uh, the next panel we saw was uh, dedicated to conservatism post-Trump. Not just conservatism, the future of conservatism. Right, another very forward-looking progressive thing, conservatism. Yep. <laughs> uh, and the it was... Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks, and she's like, I'm the progressive, and I'm going to be... She's going to grill these suckers. And it was uh, former governor of South Carolina, Mark Sanford. Appalachian trail hiker. And Grover Norquist, who, by the way, seeing Government him live, drowner, yeah. He has, he's like a little manlet, and he has such a weird, squeaky voice. It's really funny. Yeah. But uh, so Sanford and Grover, they get on there, and they immediately... Grover starts trying to like stroke off his audience, who he knows are all like, you know, lib people yeah. and he's like you know i 
this is we've seen great movement on you know legalizing marijuana on a state level. Who, who doesn't love chiefing that loud? <laughs> yeah. Let me hear it for you, gang. <laughs> and uh, do you remember what Sanford? It's, it's, it's fucking nice out, gang. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what Sanford talked about? Or? Sanford both mostly does what he always does. Well, first he buttered up the crowd by saying. I'm a Republican, I'm conservative, but we need to be able to disagree in this country and still agree to fairness. And I think Donald Trump, I agree with most of what he stands for, but I don't like his that. authoritarian he, style. He said the and he emphasized his problem with Trump was his style two or three times, and the hog swine in the audience, these yeah. idiots sitting there squealed in the sun, squealed. listening to this on, of their own free will, are like, yes, his style <laughs> is bad and authoritarian. Yeah, no. Sanford well, said, to be fair, these people are esthetes. Yeah. No, well, they're watching television in real life. Of course, that's what they care about. He's like a wrestling heel. Boo, Trump. Again, I didn't absorb much of that. It just seemed to be. Yeah, they were basically arguing about, as it always does with those two, tax cuts and the deficit. And Sanford, it was funny. You had these guys like Happy Days are here again at the whole rest of the thing. And then Sanford and Norquist are up there talking about the coming Great Depression level economic collapse that we're going to see. And for Sanford, he blames it on the deficit. And he thinks that because we have rising debts, that eventually this is going to collapse because of populist promises that can't be fulfilled on the left and right. And so this debt bomb is going to crush us all. And we have to be ready for that. And then Nork was talking about how great state level legislation is if you don't like what the federal <laughs> government is doing. And also that tax cuts are good. That was it. See, this is why you can never trust any Armenian except Dan to interview Grover Norquist. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Dan dipe Grover. Uh, yeah, it's like, hey, dude, I'm the guy who said I'd dipe you. I'm here to do it. <laughs> and his jinkos just chain smoking. Yeah. <laughs> be like, uh, uh, question I want to ask you now. Um, have you ever frozen one of your own turds and then tried to put it back <laughs> up your ass? <laughs> <laughs> but the, like, the audience was not into it. It's not like people were bopping along they were mostly ignoring it, it and eating and stuff but i do think that they feel like the people kind of trying to people who are going to this thing and recreating their media experience in real life they want to congratulate themselves for their open-mindedness not compared exactly. to the republicans so even though they don't really like listening to grover and, the, and fucking sanford talk about debt to gdp ratio they're congratulating it's themselves it's it's they're congratulating themselves for their open-mindedness in hearing them out now uh here would be the going into the next uh, presentation, which is my favorite. But before I talk about that, I should note that uh, the experience of this on psychedelic drugs, basically when you, I was watching one of the panels or like hearing any of these people speak, it had like a neutralizing effect on any of the uh, fun aspects of being high. And it would, it would just sort of like stop being high. And then I would snap out of it for a moment and start talking to Jamie and Matt and giggling. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I understand what's going on here, but like I wasn't really like full on tripping, like you know, seeing stuff. Seeing I just the, don't know why you would waste drugs on seeing that. the Donnie Darko time tunnel come out of Glover Grover's head and <laughs> go elsewhere to, t to see it come out of Steve Pinker's chest and go all the way to Jeffrey Epstein's <laughs> plane. <laughs> we I, see you, like Steve, that. you fucker. It wasn't like that, but it did highlight the weirdness of it. But, however, watching it, it like it only enhanced how boring this shit was. Oof. I was bored Brutal. on like a new plane of boredom. People paid is what for this felt like. having fourth dimension boredom. Exactly. They like, paid to stand and watch this. People were standing at the rim of the stage looking up like it was a Beatles concert the whole time. So the next one, like I said, my favorite. Oh, this was, was mwah, this was moi. Head of the DNC. Sex guy. And American sex symbol. <laughs> Pimp. Tom Perez. Strong pimp. Tom <laughs> Perez. Mean, every, every straight man has, you know, one. Right? <laughs> and, uh, get your panties popping and so dropping. Uh, being interviewed by CNN's Dana Bash. And this was, I was actually kind of impressed by how singularly uninspiring and robotic Tom Perez was. Just like a wind-up doll. I just like a very limited ram cpu with smoke coming out of it it was a sight to see the first question was well there was that event in helsinki and of course all the libs are laughing about that oh that fucking traitor and and press goes oh yes that was something wasn't it and they say 
thing that Trump said to sort of distract from it was, why didn't the DNC hand over their servers during the Russiagate hacking investigation? They only like gave them pictures or something. And Perez answers by talking about Russia for 10 minutes and saying, that's distracting Donald for you. Oh, oh my God. And, and he basically says, instead of saying, why didn't you give them the servers, they said, <laughs> uh, he said, well, we did everything that we were required to do. And we gave them all the information they asked for. And, that, and then he moved on. It set up a... That I sounds love it. I love like it. a Flandersism. Yeah, distracting yeah. And the thing Donald. Is, is that he didn't even get a pop from it. That's how sad he is. This is the most primed audience on earth to hear his shit. Yeah, yeah. And not even they were biting a, a distracting yeah, they're Donald. they're like... Uh, any of us yeah. high at a Tyler Perry movie right it, now. They are ready to engage in any attempt at humor whatsoever. And uh, But it, it began the pattern of Dana Bash asking him a question in the way like a cable news person would to try to get something out of him or, or, or pin him on an issue. And then him, sort of like the talking point algorithm begins working in his brain. Beep, and he's sort beep, of beep, like, beep, 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 beep. just sort of filibusters and goes off onto his own shtick. He said, it's a great illusion of distracting Donald this was one of the lowest moments in the history of the American presidency. Trump blinked this week. He's Putin's poodle, and that's the reality. He didn't get a See, they don't Putin's even know, either. but Trump can't blink. <laughs> uh, yeah, People no, don't they, know this. They he's, didn't even pop for Putin's poodle. He's got a secondary uh, set of eyelids like an amphibian that's clear, <laughs> so he just but he said, can't technically blink. You know, so many he, have said I was the greatest uh, staring comp contest competitor <laughs> in all of New York. I could have gone pro. I just have this eyelid mutation <laughs> that actually makes me better than you. You know, folks, I believe what Magneto said. We're better than them. <laughs> <laughs> Mutant power, okay? Uh, <laughs> other questions uh, Dana Bass tried to pin him down on was, uh, I believe one of the questions was, you know, how do you feel about individual Democratic senators like uh, Joe Manchin or Heidi Heitkamp uh, voting yes to confirm Brett Kavanaugh? Can and he was like, oh, look, it's, it's bigger than Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh, he's shown hostility to people having access to health care. Let me tell you, I've been in Nevada, New York, Oregon, Oklahoma. Yeah, he would just filibuster by, yeah, by naming <laughs> states that he's been. He's like, we're going to turn, we've turned 42, 42 deep red districts blue in the last, you know, since 2006. And then Dana Bash was like, yeah, I know you understand you weren't head of the DNC then, but under Obama, you've lost a thousand of those seats. So 42 compared to that doesn't sound that yeah. impressive. And he's like, look, look, we fell down in 2016. We weren't a 50 state party. We're a 50 state party now. We're in every state. Alabama, yeah. Oklahoma. What he really sounded like was he, he sounded like a harried IT guy on the yes. phone. For the DNC, like the DNC helpline. He's like, look, we're working hard to serve you. We're listening. Your call is important to us. Please stay on the line. <laughs> please stay on the line until November. Yeah. Just yeah. please just stay on the line until November. We can help you then if you just stay on the line. I understand, ma'am. I just, uh, I'd be mad too if I were He's you. like Gil at this point. Oh God, he is Gil <laughs> as fuck. It, it just like imagine you like you literally think Donald Trump was like hypnotized by Vladimir Putin, and it, there's like this, you know, he's a true Manchurian candidate. Uh, we're under we're at war, and then you go to this festival, this festival of ideas, and you see a man who sounds like he has seventy dust bunnies in his throat. <laughs> <laughs> who's just like talking about how he went to a county fair and people there were serious about affordability or whatever. <laughs> yeah. How do you not just fucking kill yourself? How are you not like, how, how are you not like, you know, an imperial soldier at the, during the fall They're of Tokyo? They're going to give me the good leads now. Um, uh, another, another great Tom Perez line, uh, Dana Best asked him about, you know, trying to pin him on this, like, you know, all the big energy in the Democratic Party is on the progressive left of the party, but, you know, members of X, Y, and Z are saying they're, you know, yeah, because she's frightened about Dana this. Bash, and she like, had to come from the angle of, are you going too far to yeah, the left? Yeah, and, you know, things like single-payer health care or abolishing ICE, she said, are very popular among Democratic voters. But will that work for you in a general election? And again, Tom Perez, like, the algorithm kicked in. He's like, you know, we, we, we want to lead with our values. We want to lead with our values. Our values are for immigration. And, you know, abolish ICE. Look, I want to abolish Donald Trump. Yep. That, that's, that's what we're all working to do. 50 state strategy, all 50 states, California, Maine, North Dakota, South Dakota. Like, yeah, he would just, oh, my God. Okay, but, and, but doesn't Dana Bash have serious Real Housewives face? Oh, man. It's a, it's a facial structure. 
No, she could be throwing a glass of Chardonnay at uh, Roxanne or whatever. Yeah, here's, totally. Here's the thing, Felix, to your point about like how if you if you think uh, you know Trump is like a, a secret agent to Moscow and are like he's Russia has infiltrated the White House and is controlling everything, and the guy literally in charge of the midterm elections that are supposed to like be a stop and check on this is this sputtering like yeah call center guy uh just going through these like road algorithm talking point algorithms in his head uh it's funny you bring that up because i had the exact same feeling watching tom perez on stage as i did when we were all in that house in philadelphia in 2016 watching the democratic national convention in 2016 sitting there again high as shit and just thinking Oh, oh God! They're they're gonna lose. Yeah, they're gonna lose, and that's exactly yeah. the feeling I had watching this. Not just like they're gonna the underperform in the midterms, but like Donald Trump is gonna be reelected. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Unless there's like if you were saying, unless there's like another major economic crash before then, if they if this is what they're going like if, if they keep going with this, and I have every reason to believe, yeah, that I well. feel like they'll squeak by, but you know, strictly by the skin of their teeth, and. Yeah, I mean, they'll there's learn no long-term all strategy. of the they'll learn all of the wrong things. Yeah, which... and if they barely get back in, then they will just be eaten by something even worse that will be like a final annihilation, and the whole thing will have been for naught. And um, to this point, I mean, the same literally the same day as we were at Ozzy Fest, I just want to talk a little bit. Uh, this is from uh, NBC News. There's another convention. It was the third way centrist Democrat convention. Woo! And they, they just held their big shindig to basically solve the problem of what to do about Bernie Sanders and all the people on the sort of, like I said, the excited Democratic progressive part of the party who want things like universal health care and getting rid of ICE. And they're like, we have to stop this now, right now. Yeah. So we I just want to read gentlemen, here. we got to save our funny baloney jobs. Uh, Sanders wing of the party terrifies moderate Dems. Here's how they plan to stop it. This is by Alex uh, Seitzwald uh, for NBC News. I just want to read here. Um, Re- Representative Sherry Bustos, Democrat of Illinois, a member of the Democrat- House Democratic leadership who represents a district Trump won, invoked Richard Nixon's silent majority. Mm-hmm. If you look throughout the heartland, there's a, silent, there's a silent majority who just wants normalcy, <laughs> mm-hmm. who wants to see that people are going out to Washington to fight for them in a civil way. Which is why Donald Trump won. And get something done, she told reporters. There's a lot of people that just don't really, really like protests and don't like yelling and screaming. And they worry that ang- the angry left will cost Democrats a rare chance to win over those kind of voters, including Republicans, who no longer want part of Trump's GOP. No, yeah. Remember Repu- the last time they won over those types of Republicans? How long it lasted? It was a thousand year blue reign. In yeah. 2000- after 2000. Republicans- All of those gains that have not been immediately rolled back with ease. Republicans have chosen the far right which means they have ceded a good portion of the middle of the road, said former New Orleans no, no, Mayor they, Mitch Landrieu. No, they have the entire Republicans, which is about 40% of the electorate guaranteed locked down forever. So, yeah, th- this is what, uh, you know, they, they're basically trying to find a candidate that they can run in 2020, that they can rally around to be like oh the guy who's just basically saying, like, I'm here to be civil. Well, listen to this. Representative Jim Himes of Connecticut, a chair of the New Democrat Coalition, said his side is, quote, not naturally arbiters of emotion and anger. How we tell our story and put forward our policies in a way that makes people want to mount the barricades is one of the biggest challenges we have, said Himes, a former Goldman Sachs banker who represents Fairfield, (laughs) Connecticut. He said Mm. from sitting on top of a giant mountain of gold coins. But, you know... I have every reason to believe the Democrats are going to go in this direction. And yeah, and that's just, where the power and, is. And like, like Tom Perez said about uh, AOC, he was just like, he only called her Alexandria. He only referenced her <laughs> once. And he said, listen, I called Alexandria. I-, I congratulated her on a great campaign. Oh, man, that would be great if you're Ocasio-Cortez and you like win this, one of the most shocking upsets I've ever seen. You work your ass off for it. And it's like, all right, you got your big reward. Pick up the phone. You know, I've been going to Alabama. I've been to Tulsa. I've been to, I've been to both Dakotas. I've been to West Virginia. Hell, I've even been to the Florida Panhandle. And people are just excited about accountability. <laughs> you just got to be like, why did I do this? Why did I get into Boston? I mean, honestly, uh, <laughs> we, we know uh, she's you know barnstorming with Bernie right now for like progressive candidates and you know, I, I wish them the best, but like a part of me really fears that they're just like they're gonna get literally sucker like blowing uh, air into like the CPR victim corpse of the Democratic Party. That's yep. just going to be like, we love your energy, everybody. And then just do this shit. Yeah, the only power. Like, 
in the country that Democrats have is over their own apparatus. Like, that's the thing they have an iron grip on. Yeah. yeah. I, well, and also, like, Alexandria won partially because there's, like, a 12% voter turnout. And, like, a lot of people weren't watching the shop. And the Republicans will be watching the shop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sort of feel like the best thing she could do as soon as she actually gets in the House is immediately become an independent. Because, mm. like, I, I don't know, like, just, like I said, just doing CPR for people like, Tom Perez to drag them across the finish line. Yeah, it's yeah, just I, such a fucking like, millstone around your neck. The Democratic brand and know. name She's and, all alone and, and the thing yeah. that you have to fight is just so heavy on the on the shoulders of any would be reforming candidate. It's just every energy is directed towards crushing you and destroying you and making sure you don't link up with other people to take power. Yeah, I'm not so much afraid now that the Democrats are like going to blow it in these midterms maybe they'll even like win back the white house the fear is they're just gonna keep doing the same shit and they, they will lose to tom cotton oh yeah that's they, the truth they will bring about i mean to be hyperbolic not really they will bring about the end times when the when the con contradictions are no longer sustainable when we've reached like accelerationist uh, uh, event horizon that will be the thing that brings it about is the failure of that last ditch effort to actually move the ship in some direction from the fucking iceberg or melting fucking glacier, rather. Right, because their main thing seems to be, let's make everything feel normal again. Yeah. Yes. Like, Which is, A, literal, that's impossible. That's death and, also, and also, the line. They're of, basically the fucking cult and, of the And this was, all, this, was a, this was a line that was very much echoed during Ozzy Fest. But like, there's also this line that, like, hey, we have to be better than that. Like, you know, they, they're, what they have, they're selling fear, and we need to sell, sell hope. And like, we, hope is on the This ballot. idea that, like, we can't be angry and emotional. And I really think, like, right now, in this country or like anywhere, any politician that is not speaking to people's justified anger and telling them the people who are the malefactors in their life and channeling that into some productive way that isn't speaking to people's anger is just doomed to lose. Yes. Because everyone is pissed off for both good and bad reasons. And if you're not acknowledging that, it's like you're just... You're not even yeah. playing the game. I it's think. bad couples therapy. You're not acknowledging their anger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, just like, even if you have no hope of really changing things, just recognizing that how limbic fucking politics is for people, how it's just basal, like, fucking sugar rush lizard brain satisfaction at the, 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 at the destruction of your opponent. It's all spectacle. You get all of your thrill from the libidinal energy of thinking of your enemy and destroying them, which is why all the energy is on the right. And they're trying to drain it. They're trying to say, no, you can't have an enemy. You can't feel the joy of defeating the other, which means that you'll never get the sort, same sort of enthusiasm as that. that drive. That's why Trump might actually move against the historical trend, which is that when a president wins, his opponent's base gets mobilized, and then they win, in, in the, that's why they win in midterms. His personal brand of resentment-fueled spectacle with his constant tweeting and also all of those fucking rallies he goes to that that's going to reverse the trend and actually keep those voters engaged enough to go to the polls out of the personal just thrill of engaging in the spectacle with him, being like a participant in his performance of being the president. And you could reverse that historical trend. And then they're counter-mobilized for, for the rest of time uh, in a way that you'll never be able to match with your weak tea bullshit that wants you to not vote passionately, wants you to have no energy behind it other than smug superiority over the others so you're more civilized then. I don't know. Tom Perez has been to New Mexico. He's been to Wyoming. He's been to Northern, Southern, and Central California. So he's been he's been to Spokane, Washington. He's been to Delaware. So what do you think? What do you say to that? Uh, checkmate. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, so moving on, uh, as you may have seen on Twitter, uh, Matt and I did get a chance to meet Mark Sanford and take some pictures with him. That dude fucks. Yeah. <laughs> did, that dude did, fucks. Is he still with the uh, same woman? That... I don't know. Well, she was with a woman who looked like a real housewife, mm -hmm. uh, Amber, uh, who looked kind of Latin American. Mm -hmm. I saw. I don't know if it was her or not. She was age appropriate. I think it might have been her. It would be funny if, Tom, if uh, Mark Sanford, like, he has a fetish where he can only fuck people from Argentina. <laughs> yeah, uh, if your daddy didn't die at the Falklands, we did not you get step to, off. We did not get to if meet If your madre wasn't at the plaza, <laughs> get out of here. We did not get to meet him because I'm fairly certain he knows who I am and might have attacked me. Uh, <laughs> we did see Mark Hemingway, oh, yeah. Mr. Molly Hemingway Oh, I himself. saw a picture of him. He's jangling in his pocket. He, uh, look at, look he's a big boy. Is that a euphemism? Boy. 
He's a big boy. No, he's, he's like just, he likes to have a party with his keys. We saw is that a euphemism. Mm, look it up. He's like six five, uh, looking like you know dad is shit. Um, <laughs> however, if you had shaved him, he would have looked like Judge Holden. <laughs> yes. Basically, if you he shaved was all just his this hair. Big round boy. So Terrifying. unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to say hi to Mark Hemingway and tell him, uh, you know, fuck you, your wife, and whoever pays for the wretched website that employs both of you. Uh, moving on, there was a panel with uh, Rose McGowan mm -hmm. to talk about Me Too and Hollywood stuff. To be uh, honest, Matt and I were mostly in the air-conditioned uh, Aussie Fest home theater tent. Yes, which was they, basically, had a, they had a chill-out tent, but yeah, it was that, sponsored by Volvo. It was like Wavy Gravy was just like, listen, are you okay, man? Like, is, just, is, is that the tent you go into if you drink too much Soylent? <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm exactly. freaking out. <laughs> I took the bad Soylent. Yeah, now this was like the, the bad vibes, chill-out, safe space, but we did get to see a very pleasant documentary about two young kids making mad crazy beats in berlin and driving everywhere in their volvo yeah. suv I'm sorry. It, i can't get over the fact that someone thought that an open air festival would be the proper venue to talk about rape yeah uh they went with it though god bless them yeah they you go in this this tent and you were amazed because you we're thought the volvo was a good intimacy. car it also produces mad beats does cool documentaries uh, there was one guy, there was like an older sort of techno guy. He looks like he might have been in craft work and he comes in to like work with this guy on the beats and he just turns to the camera and he goes, we are living in the future we always dreamed of. Is, is that Volvo a, the lifestyle brand? Were the uh, German children, were they like white Germans? Mm, uh, there was one guy, there was a Dutch rapper who honestly looked like a SoundCloud kid. He had braids and a grill. But he kind of looked white. I don't know. And he also played the acoustic guitar. I'm just, I just think it's fun. Like if they went with like white Germans for like the face of new hip hop, that's amazing. <laughs> that's the it's like they, they, you hear Kim.com and you're like, yeah, this, this is the future of music. Uh, so that, yeah, being the nice sort of safe space, uh, Volvo home theater was nice. Uh, the next panel was common to talk about mass incarceration. Yeah. But it was basically from what I didn't catch much of it, but from what I could hear common talk about, he was like, Basically talking about the importance of having conversations. Yeah, he basically just spoke the words in the rap songs that he does, just like in sentences instead of to a beat. That was basically it. Yeah, he said we're going to stop carceration by, the way, by listening because you can't hear unless you listen. Hey, if you're looking for an auditory experience where you listen but you also may hear yourself say some things, I cannot recommend a conversation enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, and, wait, but there, was there any political prescriptions, or was his solution to mass he incarceration? Working, he was, he's like, it's got to be. Everyone's got to come together. And the one thing he touted is that he was lobbying in California for a law to prevent juveniles from being sentenced to life. Uh -huh. That's, not That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, so I think his his prescription was change the law. And he he name checked uh, the. Michelle Alex Michelle Alexander new Jim Crow book yeah. a lot. And All right. like that really like changed his thinking or like that book it, informed is bad. his uh, <laughs> worldview or whatever. Adolf Fried is ba right about that book. It's bad. I'm, I'm just reporting <laughs> what Common said. You want, uh, we can text him. Yeah, text Common. Do you, th yeah. do you think that? Do you think that like Mark Sanford when he saw a Common, he's like, ah, I did not know there would be gangster rap here. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have come had I known. That's the most racist you can be. Just seeing like Common. That, or that is interesting like, though because. I don't think in any time prior to 2018 would liberals entertain something like ending mass incarceration. Yeah, so no, there, there is some them, kind though. of tight change on yeah, that, at sure. least in terms of, of terms of public like what, opinion. What they have to, I don't think they'll do anything no, no, about what it. What they have to have as their radical pet issue has changed. It's gotten yeah. more radical, which does, yeah, the, the center of gravity is shifting. If you have to go more extreme in your pet fake issue that you pretend to care about, yeah. then that means that you, you will never do to anything to change or do some tiny micro, yeah. you know, policy. There's a red shift, as it were. All I know about Commons uh, common segment is that at no point was he asked about John Wick three. Bullshit. And I tuned out. You know well, he's gonna be in that thing. He didn't they didn't show him dying in the second one. Or what about Suicide Squad two? That's true. Also in Suicide Squad. He is also in Suicide Squad. Hopefully it's Squad. like a twin brother or it's a prequel, something yeah, to explain yeah, yeah. him dying, because yeah. I like to see more of him. All right. So now this brings us to the headline oh, yeah. act. This is when it actually got a little crowded. Over the course of the day, you know, it was thin. It filled in. It was pretty full for common. A lot of people were parked on the, in the front, in the groundling section, all day. They, like, got there at noon and posted up all day to be there to be front row for Hillary. 
Hillary Clinton Booyah. interviewed by Steve Jobs's widow. Yep. Oh man, that is the first <laughs> and, thing you see. You when know, you get I love to the neoliberal cargo cult element, the the the, the, the magical element, like like fucking like uh, Steve jo- like Steve Jobs's wife is like a temple priestess who has had Congress with the gods or something, <laughs> yeah. and like she has a bit of his magic yeah. within her. Yeah. Like she's she's just the wife of an asshole who's dumb and died. <laughs> Real dumb. The fucking juice drinking nitwit died, and he I, had a wife. What I'm, does she have to say? I mean, we all make fun of Steve Jobs for being one of the richest men who's ever lived, and probably having the best probability of beating his cancer, and instead opting to drink naked juice. Yep. <laughs> but maybe he would have died quicker if he hadn't drinking the juice. Yeah, that's. Did true. anyone think about that? Then literally nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like Albert Einstein or Thomas Edison said, "I've not found a way to fail. I've just." found a million ways that don't work yeah and that's steve jobs with cancer <laughs> he's like all right we've done an experiment and it turns out the juice it, doesn't work yeah it turns out if i drink like some papaya i kind of die after <laughs> all right so hillary comes out and she i think it's interesting uh her style has sort of ditched the pantsuit presidential yeah. power thing and is now wearing these sort of like flowing kind of ca- like moo moo really? like yeah it's like very osha like yeah, it's oh. osha yeah, yeah no yeah. It, we, i honestly felt like we were at a rishnishi That's fucking awesome. rally because the colors of the bandanas are the same orange and red as the rajnish and so it felt like we were there to see the bhagwan and then she came out in this big billowing shimmering <gasps> gownlet queen thing. sheila queen sheila and it's like fuck oh it really absolutely is. Yeah, it's like no, if I'm really happy Sheila had done a coup. Her, um, divorcee in Miami phase. Yeah, it's like she could never do the pantsuit. She would never do like a, a V neck. Uh, she always did the Nehru. So she could have had the Merkel titty thing going, yeah. but she was just too frumpy for yeah. it. She looked like a, a tin soldier. Now she just needs to go full cult. No, she's full cult. She could have gotten these people to drink the fucking Kool Aid. Well, here's right the thing. There. Here's the thing. Here is the dynamic in this interview. Steve Jobs' widow would ask these very long leading questions that would sort of like pile one thing, one outrage on top of the other and like peak the excitement of this audience of people who are literally like, you know, chanting for Hillary and be like, please Amazing. help, you know, help. We, we still us. love you. Save, Save us. Save us from destruction. You know, like you'd be like, you know, we all saw what happened last week. Donald Trump in Helsinki, the Mueller indictments, Trump, everything. And like and the audience would be peaking, and like at one point, a woman literally yelled, "He's a spy!" <laughs> about Donald Trump, and then so she'd ask these really long leading questions, and then Hillary would answer, and then immediately just start droning on in this flat way, and then just dissipate all the energy that like had been keyed up by the question by just being like. Well, obviously, I'm very concerned. You know, if you read the Mueller indictments, yeah. and I recommend that you read them, there's just a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff there. And I wanted to be like, what interesting stuff? And then she just goes on, you know, our director of national intelligence and just sort of lays out this very kind of like rote recitation of like the news facts about Donald Trump and yeah. Russia. It was like every time the question got asked, the entire audience uh, took a big breath in and then. Hillary's answer was just a slow exhale to nothingness. Yeah, because they all she, it, like it dissipated all the energy, and yet they were not they, the great she, orator Hillary no, Clinton. She, they wanted amazing. Like Chill Dog is there in her in her moo moo, un you know unmoored from electoral politics. <laughs> yeah, with her, that's with a her, party. She's with her, she's at a party at Ozzy Fest. The, the, the she's news, just chilling at Ozzy. Yeah, Fest. she's chilling. And this audience of women, of like nasty women and people who are like, you know, at probably active politically, who are like really want to see her. She could she could have just cut loose and be like, you know what? Fuck Donald Trump. He's a crook, a fraud and probably an illegitimate president. Oh, and that's she all... might have started another revolution. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, to be it. honest, that would be true. And that's all these people wanted to hear. But instead, she just like just drones on. And again, this is like I literally felt like uh, Homer Simpson when Ned Flanders is talking to him about cider. That was when <laughs> that was when my brain finally left my body. I could just it's amazing. Feel, feel my body, my spirit leaving my body. And I didn't get it back until we made it all the way back to my house. But like this was the big denouement again. Hillary Clinton said nothing of interest as Matt. Matt kept saying, where's the tea? She I want the tea. Any tea. No tea was spilled. 
Putin wasn't even canceled. <laughs> well, that that's the thing. Um, Did you guys it, all watch Paris is Burning recently? Because the entire WhatsApp is nothing but T this and T that. <laughs> and it's okay, not it's like I'm uncomfortable tea. with people who use that language. Uh, they're around me a lot, but it's usually not you guys. Look, it's T. That's all there is. <laughs> Matt, 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 that's all there is to it. Matt's trying to get on Real Housewives. <laughs> Matt's trying to be one of the Real Housewives. Uh, he, they're like. Do you guys have like, gay TV parties without me? No, yeah, he's gonna be on Real Housewives. Fucking Lisa Vanderpump is gonna be in the interview segment and be like, "I've honestly had a terrible week with Ramona, but Matt is <laughs> Matt is always a calming force." And then it's like Matt in Sir with Lisa, and he's just eating a huge plate of ribs. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yes. "That's key. This would be awesome. <laughs> I could throw a drink into a woman's face and yell at her and say." How could you wear a tube top to my son's funeral? <laughs> uh, uh, Matt, can we join Vanderpump Rules? Yes, King. That's yeah. gonna be T. <laughs> <laughs> I I do like I do like the Hillary stuff though because it's like it reminds me of the Obama stuff where uh, from Dan Pfeiffer's book where it's like I told Barack Obama I was getting married and he was like, uh, "Do you like her?" Okay, cool. <laughs> and he the, he just thinks it's, it's the most amazing advice he's ever gotten. And Hillary will just be like. Sometimes I think Donald Trump isn't a very good president. And people will be like, oh, my God, you just went off. No, that's how they acted. Like the mildest yeah. thing she says, I think the president needs to wake up to what's happening. Oh, my yes. Yes, Queen. Yes. Yeah, it's like, did they expect her to go up and be like, I think he deserves more chances. He's, br he's brought half of the jobs back. Like, what did he do? What <laughs> did he's he's building the wall. Uh, you, know, you, you know, she said, you know, Putin is, you know, he wants to dominate his neighborhood. Yes. You know, like, that's our job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was explicitly. Daddy was, America has a sphere of influence, which is good because America is good and it does good things. Russia has a sphere of influence that is bad because Russia is bad and it does bad things. If we lose our sphere of influence to Russia, then that means bad things for those people. So that means we have to ex keep our sphere of influence as big as possible. We need a but new Cold this War. This is amazing. This is, this, these people are all members of 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 the cult of the infallible mother god it's insane it's, it's and fucking she was insane. totally she did not take a single bit of blame for anything that's befallen us she talks about how, how could you america's watch great, that and be america's impressed good the election of trump is a total aberration that was largely the product of cheating because an intervention by vladimir putin uh, uh uh so yeah america is great except for that um i have a question uh i imagine it was just like breathless nonstop. Russia talk because like for that event to take place you have to believe that like the election was an aberration and as you said yeah place by cheating was there any talk about like voter suppression there w a little bit a little bit she talked yeah. about the voting she, rights she, act she being did talk gutted the, about, she did All talk right. about the supreme court gutting the voting rights act Tom Perez did talk about you know in his own weird language like access to voting like he talks about access to health care I think awesome they did, I love affordable Hillary voting. did mention like you know considering that we, we should probably get rid of the electoral college you know it's like yeah, well, wow. a little too little too late yeah, yeah. You know? uh, so yeah there was that was acknowledged also because they don't want that but because she, because it would it would make their own party vulnerable to left wing competition but she does not take any responsibility once she was no was she's the clear. infallible mother that god was crystal clear is that she actually said at one point, America is a great country and we have, could have a great future, but I feel like we're blowing it. She's like blaming us. Like, you fucking idiots blew this for me. At no point does she take any responsibility to say, we could have done more. We could have foreseen something. We could have spoken to people's dreams more. Uh, we could have been more conscious of what's going on. No, just the bad Russians stole it from me. And it's your fault for not, uh, not you know, uh, fighting enough for me. But that's a big thing with these, these kind of very dutiful... Um, followers of neoliberalism. I remember when um, the uh, journalist that busted the Elizabeth Holmes uh, story found out that the employees at Theranos had made a video game where they shot his head. <laughs> and it was really fascinating because it's like, one, don't you, you're, you kind of have a job. How did you have time to do this? <laughs> But two, they blamed the journalist and not the infallible mother god with mm -hmm. her booming voice. <laughs> and like, these, these are not charismatic women in it's any way, shape, or form. how uncharismatic Hillary is. Yeah. So I've never seen her speak before, and it was just breathtaking. I, I don't know how they can, their Pied Pipers are so uncharming. I don't understand it at all. It's just they're lazy here was, drifters. Here was the, the brutal denouement to the entire day and Hillary Clinton's 
little discussion. Uh, at the end of it, uh, Steve Jobs' widow was like, you know, we want to show you what America really is and like all the all the hope that's happened since January of this mm. year, you know? Mm. And they like they pulled back the stage and like, you know, a big projector was assembled. And they're like, we we either her or the people at Ozzy were like, we created this montage for you, Hillary. And it was this slick video package of like a map of the United States and then like like dots would like pop up on it to mark uh, protests that have happened, like the uh, March for Science, uh, the, you know, uh, Parkland teens, or like anti-gun stuff. And like really what you were seeing was like every bit of like protest or like activist energy and cause that has happened since Donald Trump's election was basically saying, it's all for you, Hillary. Yes. It's all, you inspired all of us this is to all do about this. You. And this is Even all stuff, about you. They had images from fucking Standing Rock, which happened mostly under Obama, and when she, and which she totally signed off on, she offered that like really mealy mouth statement about it in the run up to the to the election. Uh, they the Black Lives Matter protests. I mean, teacher not, strikes, teacher yeah. strikes in, in some of them in Democratic controlled states. I mean, the, 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 just the idea that you could turn all of that into some encomium on the American people who essentially let Hillary down and now are trying to redeem themselves in her in her honor. That is really what it was. It was like. We've all disappointed you, mother. We're very sorry. We're trying to make it up to you. And then they show her this image of them getting better. We're getting better as and a it's country. Like, yeah, like we're going to be worthy of you someday, Hillary. And then she gets to say, I forgive you. That's, that was it. Like, you know, it was like we fell down. You know, we let you down. And like now we're seeing we're, we're growing. We learned yep. from the mistake. And like there was images of people like I'm marching for my daughter. Like, you know, I'm marching because, you know, we're all one people. And like America's better than hate or whatever. And it was... Uh, yeah, that was that was really it. That all, was like the yeah. climax to the the whole day. We're all Johnny Fontaine and Hillary's Don Corleone. We're gonna you get come it. to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> so after that, there then it turns act into an actual music festival and common wrapped. Someone called Young the Giant performed. Although I don't know if that that's even a happened band because that's <laughs> that's when the rain came. Because all day it got more and more cloudy until Hillary came up and the skies were almost black and it felt like God's <laughs> judgment was upon us. Like she had summoned God's wrath by her very presence. And I just kept waiting for that cleansing, judging rain to come down on us while she was speaking. And it never happened. God has forgotten us. Literally, I'm sorry. Like I he sat on. not cry for us anymore. What we do, he doesn't care. I sat on the harp remote. My mistake. <laughs> You know, I kept waiting. Uh, you know, a Domian was texting me during it, and he said like he was, he he thought the whole thing should end with some sort of cabin in the woods style twist, yes. where, like the hand of Moloch just like emerges <laughs> from the ground, and the sky was getting so black. That's what I thought was going to happen, or or even better, you know, per the name of the magazine and the event, uh, they would just teleport in some giant alien squid that would kill <laughs> everyone. I thought I was going to have to like. It was going to be True Detective season one where Marty goes to the biker bar. I was imagining myself just like doing low kicks and like clinch elbows through the crowd of like resistance dads to get to you guys because they found out that you guys were undercover. <laughs> <laughs> I just like pull out my 92 FS out of my waistband. I'm like, move the fuck away. <laughs> and, but no, you guys were fine. I was just we were I was fine. hoping I could do that. We that were fine. Been fucking uh, cool. Anyway, so God, I feel like reciting everything we did was almost as tiring as uh, experiencing it. Yeah, but it's pretty brutal. Like I said, we and made we're our missing, escape. We're missing the second day. You might think, how could there ever be a second day of this? But we well, there, there won't be for me after opening up my soul that deeply to uh, what, what I saw there. What, what's happening to, to not, today that we're missing, we got Malcolm Gladwell spinning the ones <gasps> and twos. DJ Malcolm Gladwell. That's right. He's done a thousand hours of ten thousand hours of beats, and he's bringing them to you. <laughs> is he he's taking Oxcore DJ sets from Wardell? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Chelsea Handler and that billionaire scumbag Tom Steyer who wants to become like the fucking, uh, the basically the Coke brother of the Democrats, or maybe even run for president. Yeah, Tom Steyer has like six hundred billion dollars, and he's used it buying billboards that say Trump and Russia. Something's going on. Exactly. <laughs> so he's having what a is his money in? So helpful. What he's is, having a conversation. What is his money in? Oh, uh, he's a hedge fund motherfucker, like all of them. Uh, and he's um, he's going to be talking to, with Chelsea Handler about impeachment and what we awesome. can do to oh, make it happen. My God, I well, oh, I want to awesome. get a good show on my TV. I want to see that impeachment trial. That's going to be must see TV. Uh, so we're missing that. We're missing Carl fucking Rove. Uh. That sweating Christmas ham <laughs> is right now, or, or he already did it, uh, doing a fucking thing where you know he what? talks about 
Ah, well, let me tell you about conservatism. Yeah, you, uh, you know what? You should not have an event with Karl Rove unless it's a public execution. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what? Uh, Matt, I'm glad you brought up Karl Rove because another thought I had as pure as a diamond right in my forehead in the middle of Hillary talk, you know, litigating all of this Russia stuff and all of the people who were enraptured by it. I just want to be like, these are all like adult to middle-aged people. In 2000, George W. Bush stole an election in front of everyone. Yep. No foreign Jack interference involved. Yep. Straight up stole that, was appointed president by the Supreme Court, and he went on to start a war that killed a million people. Could you grow up, please? Can we have a little perspective about... But he wasn't a Cheeto. Oh, God. He I don't was know. a man. I don't know. So, yeah, that's it. That's I, can, I can't wait for Ozzy Fest in, uh, you know, 2028 when... Uh, you know, for, uh, the Baron Trump, uh, Marcus Notch Peterson super ticket wins. And Donald Trump is at Aussie Fest 2028. <laughs> and he's like, you know, uh, my own son, he's just, he's too racist. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. <laughs> and the crowd just goes jar. crazy. Yeah. It's his head in a jar and it's fucking, the, it's it, encased in a bubble because New York City is completely underwater. Yeah, his body, his CPU is encased by balls from McDonald's ball pit in the yep. play place yeah i'm i, I need oxy fest after uh <laughs> the, living through this but um yeah what i'll say to sum it up uh the impression i got uh from from this and the general energy uh, for the democrats are going to run from now until 2020 on russia and donald trump impeaching him holding him accountable and then returning nor bringing normalcy back and they're gonna tr try to sort of leech as much energy as they can get from people who are really excited about things like abolishing ICE or single payer, and they're going to absorb it all and just shit out someone like, I don't know, Joe Biden or like try to get Hillary across the line again. They haven't learned anything and they're not going to change. That's mm -mm. what I learned. Irredeemable. From We've seen the heart of darkness. Well, sounds like there's a lot of bad news out there, but I'm going to tell you the world is getting better in small ways every day. <laughs> Five wins for Team Fuck You Mean on Fortnite on for this last Friday, including three in a row, which even Ninja himself has trouble doing. World is getting better. Let's go. Nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck. That's your game. Yeah, the wreck of the other team. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, here's a bit of good news. I'd like to do one plug before we close. Uh, starting now, from the moment you listen to this, my words, and in the description to this show's episode, we are beginning our very special ebook promotional offer if you pre order the Chapo Guide to Revolution. Folks, you've heard about it, are oft spoken about in hushed tones. A special ebook written by the minds behind Chapo Trap House containing four all new, all original tales of madness and weirdness will be yours for free. If you pre-order the Chapo Guide to Revolution from any bookstore, here's how it works. Send a copy of your receipt, a screenshot, or the email that you got forwarded, or even just a photograph of a receipt uh, to chapobook at gmail.com. Email chapobook at gmail.com, all one words, with a copy of your receipt, your pre-order receipt, to get a free copy of... Tales from the Dark Looking Glass. They're Chapo Trap House. Chapo Trap House presents Tales from the Dark Looking Glass. And we are certainly through that Dark Looking Glass now. Oh, yeah. We are all the way that through, we baby. We have gone to Ozzy Fest and come back alive to tell you about but it. But changed. Yes. It, yeah. There is the no tomorrows for us. Yeah. We have such sights to show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also before I go, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't give a very special shout out to Jamie Peck, our friend for the day, our spiritual guide and guru through the grueling affair of Ozzy Fest. Please check out Jamie Peck uh, for the Majority Report and her own podcast, The Antifada. Links in show description. Till next time, guys. Hasta la pronto. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.